I should probably put a disclaimer at the beginning of this video that anything I say I'm going to do is subject to change. Hey Flosstube, welcome back to my channel. My name is Christine and this is the start of my June 2022 cross-stitching vlog. It's June 2nd today and I wanted to get in here and start uh, with telling you what my tentative plans are going to be because they always change. Yes. If you just watched last month's video, by chance, if you just watched it before this, you will have a nice uh, refresher, a fresh refresher in your mind of what I said I was going to do. And it was two projects I was going to work on. And for the most part, that is the same. So let's get started. Um, I had um, had a request from my friend Ashley over at Wayward Stitcher. She had just recently purchased this Honeybee Buttons and Beads. Oh, that's a nice glare. And uh, I told her I had that one also, and she asked if I wanted to stitch it along with her, and I said, sure, why not? I wanted to do, I had a bunch of the new releases from the Mill Hill. So this is the uh, spring series, the most recent one from last spring. And I purchased probably, I don't know, maybe four out of the six new big ones. And I haven't stitched any of them yet. And the fall ones came out and now the Christmas ones are coming out and I want to stitch them all. So Anyway, I said, yes, we need to get one of these started. So I went ahead and started this on June 1st with Ashley, which was yesterday. And this is what I got done on it so far. Not very much that you can see. So I just did a little bit at the top strip up there and a little bit right there. So not much, and it's kind of blended in with the background, so it's kind of hard to see. But... Uh, Originally, um, before, so at the end of last month, I had kind of lost my stitchy bug for a while last month. It's starting to come back. Now I want to stitch all the things because that's kind of how it works. But if you have um, been following me, you know, my oldest whip is this one right here. It's going on maybe 12 years <laughs> this month. I have got to get this thing done. Okay, and when I did my whip parade, Everybody was like, you got to finish that. And, and, you know, I have so many of you rooting for me, cheering me on. So, and I did promise that I was going to get this done by the end of the year. And I said in my last video that I suddenly did feel the urge to work on this one. So I pulled it out and thought, oh, you know, I can get it, get it done because I only have about that bottom corner left to do. But I was looking at it and because there's a lot up here that's half stitches and some that's not stitched at all. And this is solid stitching down here. Even though I only had that corner to do, I would say number of stitch wise, I mean, it looks almost like I'm just only half done with it. So it was a little more daunting than I thought. So I'll show you how it looks. And I did put it in the hoop already. So I'm not going to take it out of the hoop to show you the full thing. But, you know, you, you can just watch my whip parade, my most recent whip parade. So this is what I have done on it so far. So interesting thing about this is that I've already done the hardest part because the hardest part of this is was backstitching this eagle. That was that was hard. That was probably the reason why this went into the whip pile for so many years is because I stitched that and every time I pulled it out, it's like, wow, that looks so daunting. So the last time I pulled it out, I did all the backstitching so far that of what I've stitched. So even these rocks, they're backstitched. So I just have this bottom part to do <laughs> and... Um, I'm going to make that my focus. Originally, I was thinking I could get it done maybe by the end of June, but I don't know. Some some other uh, stitching projects are calling my attention, shall we say. So I don't think that this is going to be... It's going to be kind of like the background focus, but I had mentioned that my son is um, my oldest son, the one that just finished his freshman year. He's, so he's in between his freshman and sophomore year of college, and he is going to go to Ireland. He's going to leave on the 17th, so that's coming right up, to go to Ireland for a semester of school. So he's going to be gone for six weeks, and I had mentioned in my last video that I'm going to be a nervous wreck while he's gone. He's, you know, 
never traveled, never been on a plane, never been to an airport, and he's he's going all by himself to Ireland. And I'm just I'm worried. I'm worried about all the things, all the things that you'd worry about as a mom. So I needed a distraction while he was gone. So I'm definitely going to focus on this and this is going, I'd like to have this done before he comes back from his six weeks in Ireland. So my goal has stretched out a little bit on that, but this is one that's going to be working and that in the working in the background. Another one that I started last month that I want to continue working on still is this Biscornu from um, a seller on Etsy. Trina Mast, Mastakova, I think is how you say that. It's called the Hug Biscornu, and it's a, um, a stitch for Ukraine. She's a Ukrainian designer, and I really wanted to get that done too. So I'm slowly working on that. Yeah, I'm almost halfway done. So that will be another project I focus on. Um, that's all I originally had and then right after I uploaded my last video I had a stitching friend uh, Jen Bowman over at she does has a floss tube channel hi Jen and she had this great idea she DM'd me on Instagram and said hey I happen to notice that your hockey team is playing my hockey team in the Stanley Cup playoffs and because she lives in Edmonton, so I'm in Colorado, so we've got the Colorado Avalanche, and she's the Edmonton Oilers, and um, they're playing, you know, the best out of seven, and I believe, okay, how horrible is this? Now, I think the winner of this set of seven games goes on to the actual Stanley Cup. Um, I could be wrong, but she had this idea, since we're playing against each other, she said, okay, you pick a project you love or really want to work on and a project you don't want to work on very much that's languishing in your stash. And she said, so each night, because right, the, the teams play a game about every other night until it's the, the winner is the best of seven games. So she said, if your team wins, you get to work on the project that you choose that you want to work on. And if your team loses, you have to work on the project you don't want to work on that's languishing in your stash. So, and so it's kind of like a couple nights on each. That way, both of the projects will get a little bit of love. So I thought that was a brilliant idea. So um, we already had our first game and... Colorado Avalanche won, so I got to choose to stitch on what I wanted to stitch on at the time, and which, because it just so happened to be the same day that I started the B, this is the one that I'm going to focus on if my team wins for the seven game series. So I'll put some stitches into the B if my team wins, and if my team loses, I'm going to uh, go dig a whip out of my stash that is like my least favorite whip, the one that I don't want to work on the most. And I have to go look and see. If I were just to not look at them and think about it, I think it's my little Colorado sampler. It's kind of a small Colorado one, and for some reason I don't like working on it. I think I don't like the fabric. So I think that might be the one. And it's so close to being done. I mean, I could probably finish that thing if I just gave it a little bit of time. Um, I'm going to this afternoon go dig through the whips and see if that truly is the one that I'm going to choose. But, but um, I think we play uh, tonight, so I may not have to pick it yet if we win. And we're going to win. Just saying, Jen. The Avalanche are going to win. Okay. <laughs> that being said, I think I'm ready to uh, end this little clip for now. And... Was there anything else on the plan? Oh yeah, some other tentative plans we might have is I think there's another Mill Hill Summer Stitch Along brewing. Um, I'll give you details about that as soon as I have it. It's gonna be some kind of Summer Mill Hill hashtag. So I do wanna stitch something for that. I'm gonna pick a summer related one. Don't know if it'll be a small one or a big one that I start for that. But that's it. That's, that's all I've got so far to get this month going. On a good note, I'm so happy that my stitchy bug is back and I, I just I don't like it when I don't want to stitch because there's just like so very little time to stitch all the things I want to stitch anyway that then when I lose my stitchy bug, it's like that's time wasted. But I don't know. I guess it wasn't really completely wasted because I was working on other crafty things, which, sorry, I keep looking out my window because something's giving me a flyby. 
Yeah, there's a bird out there. I don't know which one it is. Uh, yes, I will have some bird chatter at the end of this video too to decide um, the bird flashcards and which ones I'm going to talk about. So I'll tack that on at the end. But okay, I got distracted and I meant to say that why uh, while I was losing my stitchy bug, I did you know venture into some other crafty things. I did film an intro to um, a, that National Parks paint by number. I filmed an intro to that. And I was going to upload it, but I think I'm going to wait until I do a little of the painting so that you kind of have that to see also. And I also filmed an intro, I should say an unboxing of the ink, inking florals that I showed. I think I showed that in maybe my March or April vlog. <laughs> it's all blending together now and I don't remember. Um, I will decide when to upload those. And uh, I do want to do another paint by number. I've been dying to do another paint by number too, so... I don't know, I have, uh, my, and my felt kits, yes, the Bucilla felt kits. I'm working on the butterflies right now, ran into a little snag with them, but I think I figured it out, and I'm gonna be working on those too, so I don't know. I mean, I have my hands in a lot of crafty things. Gardening this year, on the other hand, last year I had so many seeds started, I was so involved, I had my raised beds and all that I was gonna do, it was just gunk ho and I have literally done nothing with my garden my gardens out front now I think today because we had a ton of rain I'm gonna go out I'm gonna grab some old seeds from my zinnias from last year and my snapdragons and I think I'm just gonna toss those in the front garden bed and um, let that be and I don't know if I'm gonna do anything with my raised beds because I was gonna try to get a like an irrigation system in because they needed to be watered every single day so I don't know, I just, some years I'm in the mood for gardening and some years I'm not. I need to go get those seeds out in there too. Okay, I'm starting to ramble and this is only the first clip of the month, so. Okay. Good morning, Stitchers. Let's see, I last spoke with you on Thursday and the Avs were getting ready to play their second game against the Oilers and I was I ended up stitching on this throughout the whole game, and I'm happy to report that we won. So it was actually a shutout, 4-0. to zero. So it was a great game, and I stitched on my bee throughout the game. And because we won, I get to continue stitching on this until our next game, which is tonight, Saturday. So um, I will we'll be working on this today, and I, I kind of thought I was going to get bored with it because of all... If you look, it's got a lot of yellow in the background. And although it has these beautiful pink and blue flowers and this beautiful bee, I do know that it does take a long time to do that background. And I should have probably started over there and worked on the yellow, but I didn't. I started right over on this corner, and this is what I've gotten done so far. So really stitching up quick, and the yellow isn't too bad. It's kind of, um, kinda, you know interspersed in there with the flowers. So I think what I'm going to do when I work on this today is um, I'm not going to start the bee just yet. I think I'm going to go work over here and try to get some of this yellow done. Maybe work a little bit down here. Maybe I'll reward myself with doing some pink and then maybe a strand of yellow and then come here and do some more pink and then yellow. Maybe I'll start on the bee doing a little bit of black and yellow in the middle. We'll see. But I do get to stitch on this today and all through the game tonight. And if we win, I just get to continue working on this. If we lose, I'll have to go dig into the pile of whips and see which one calls to me the least. And then that's the one I'll work on. But we're not going to go there unless we have to. And um, I just wanted to show you. Now, I have not forgotten about my eagle. As a matter of fact, he's right next to me here giving me an evil side eye. Well, maybe it's not so evil, but it is a guilty side eye. Don't worry, Eagle, I'll get to you. I just have other more pressing things to do right now. And, um, yes, this is what I'm going to be focusing on today. And then another thing that's just still really calling to me, I may work on this a little bit today too, my Biscornu, um, because I recently, so... I had given a shout out to Teeny Weeny Stitches in my last video, and then she had given a shout out to Crisscross Stitcher in her video. So I went to go check out Crisscross Stitcher, and 
only watched one video of his so far, but I, I have a feeling sometimes you just find a floss tuber and you want to go back and watch him from the beginning. But his channel was like walking into Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. If Mr. If Mr. Rogers was a cross stitcher. So, like I said, I've only watched one video of his so far, but I loved it. I loved his segment that he did on um, vintage toys because he looks like he's about the same age as me. So I'm sure we have a lot in common with our childhood toys. So that was great. If you haven't checked him out yet, I will link him below. And then as I was watching his channel, he was giving a shout out to the Vintage Stitcher, another stitcher who I have not subscribed to. So I went and checked her out because they are doing a, a pin cushion challenge. And there's a hashtag. Um, I'll link that below what the hashtag is. But that I thought, oh, that, that really, you know, kind of motivates me still to get this done because listening to her talk about pin cushions got me all excited about making pin cushions. And so I want to finish this one and then maybe start another one. Um, I'll have to look. There's just so many really cute pin cushions out there. So I think I might try my hand at maybe making some handmade pin cushions. I'm so easily distracted when it comes to crafty things. I'll tell you. That's why whips like this languish in the whip pile for years and years and years. Is because I cannot stay focused on any one thing for very long, apparently. All right, um, I'm going to go ahead and get some stitching done. I'm probably going to work a little on this, but mostly on this today. And I think the only other thing I have to do today is go um, visit with my mother-in-law. I'm going to go over there and have a cup of coffee with her and pick up a few things that she needs at the store. And other than that, I don't have a lot of big plans today. And I'll definitely check in to let you know if I get to continue working on my bee or if I had to switch to a less favorable project. Okay, see you soon. So I was watching Brenda over at Handwork Maniac. She had mentioned me in one of her latest floss tubes and she was mentioning that she was inspired by my Marjolaine Baston, that big huge Four Seasons project that I started. Was it last summer or was it the summer before? I don't know. Yeah, not the first one I did of hers. The, the She has two Four season patterns. There was the old one that I did that I it's called Four Seasons, and, I, and then she came out with a new, like, brighter colored one, much, much bigger. And it's also called Four Seasons, or Four Seasons Sampler. I don't know, they're both kind of named the same thing. Anyway, the one that I haven't finished yet that's huge, I reference it in a video some time ago. Don't remember. Anyway, she had been watching my video and was inspired by that, and she purchased it. And she's starting to stitch it. And she, I started in the upper right hand edge and for some reason I've stalled on that project. It's very big and daunting, but I think after watching her video, I realized that I think why, why I'm stalled on that one is because the outer edge that I started on is kind of where there's some spread out motifs and um, I don't know, it just, I, I just didn't enjoy the part I was working on. And I kind of had wished I would have started in the center and we were kind of chatting in her comments and, and, you know, she had suggested maybe counting, you know, to get myself into the center of that project and work on that center motif, which really inspired me to want to get that project out and start working on it again. So I think as soon as I finish my eagle, I'm going to get that out and uh, sort of count myself to going into the center of that. I might do it even before I start the eagle. I might just kind of reference, get me a reference point. I'm, not, I'm really feeling the need to get that pattern out. <laughs> Another distraction. But 
it's so funny how you can start a project and you're really inspired by it and then you lose your steam and then you see somebody else stitching it and then it re-inspires you to get back to it again. So thank you, Brenda, for that. I'm going to dig that out of the closet and as a matter of fact, I might do that today. I'm really kind of dying to know if how doable it is to count from the outer edge to the center and be okay that I didn't make a mistake. I haven't stitched very much on it yet that even if I do make a mistake and find the wrong center and it doesn't match up, I would even be okay with taking out what I've already stitched just to be able to start in the center. But it does, it's one of those patterns that there's, it's, it's fudgeable. So it's a, fu it's a fudgeable pattern. So I think even if I do miscount and get the center wrong and it doesn't meet up with what I've already done, there's room there to sort of leave. There's a lot of blank space to be able to leave some, you know, leave a row out or something or, you know, fudgeable. That's the, the only word to describe it really. Let's just turn this over and run that under some stitches, which I always find kind of hard to do on perforated paper as well. Just running it under those stitches. There's not a lot of give there. All right, get my little mini snips. These things are super sharp. You have to be careful. It'll cut a hole right through your perforated paper if you're not careful. Okay. Thanks for uh, stitching with me. I'm going to load up another color of yellow, I think, and continue, continue on. See you soon. Good morning, and welcome to Wednesday, June 8th. In the last clip, I was getting ready to watch game three of the Colorado Avalanche, and I am happy to report that they won game three, and that was Saturday night, and then... Monday night they played game four and I'm also happy to report that we won that game. That one was a nail biter. It went into overtime but we won and I'm so excited because that means that we get to go to the Stanley Cup final. So very thrilled about that. We are still waiting to see who we're going to be playing in the Stanley Cup final because the Rangers and the Lightning are still battling it out at this moment. So stay tuned. But because of the team won my team won. Um, I was able to continue working on this. And let me get in closer because you can't really tell since it's the same color. But I did get a lot of this yellow done in the background. I'm starting to work on a little bit of orange and another brighter yellow color there. Um, but you can start to see the silhouette of the bee forming right here. So there's the wing and the head. And the other wing is up here. And I am loving this project so much. I'm having such a hard time pulling myself away from it. <laughs> So I'm glad I didn't have to pull myself away from it to grab a languishing whip. Let me turn this over. It's kind of just, uh, my background is kind of, maybe you can see a little better there with that background, maybe. But there you go. So uh, I don't have a lot of stitching time this morning. I thought I would just steal away a little bit of time to finish up these two threads that I had already loaded. That's probably all I'm going to get done now and have a bit of a busy Wednesday today. So I don't know. I probably won't be getting to stitch anymore until this evening. And admittedly, I will probably work on this a little longer. I just, I can't pull myself, if I pull myself away from this and start working on my eagle, I know that it's going to be all eagle all the time. So, and this will become a whip and I probably won't get back to it until next spring just because I know me and that's what I do the minute I move on to something else this one gets forgotten about which is kind of the problem I'm having with my Viscorn U I'm also working on that on the side and I really 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 want to get that done I did make some progress and I forgot to bring it out so I'll show you but I only have one corner one bottom corner of blue left to do and then fill in the yellow so that's going really quick and that's a real easy one to uh, to work on okay um I think that's all I have for now about stitching, but I was thinking of taking you to the front to, in a previous clip, was that this month? I think it was this month I was mentioning my gardening and how I haven't really done anything with it. And I thought maybe I would bring you around front to show you uh, what my garden looks like now because I am gonna throw some seeds into the ground, I think here. 
shortly and just kind of see what happens. So let's go walk around front and take a look. Okay, so here we are at the front of my yard and so what you see here is what Mother Nature has decided to self-seed from last year. So we've got some of these little ones that you see are snapdragons that just sort of self-seeded from last year. And I am happy to see that I got some bachelor buttons from last year. I grew those for the first time last year and those uh, are some seeds. Uh, and then I don't remember what that is. That's something, I think that's a perennial growing from last year, but I don't remember. And then a sad little tulip bulb from years ago. I was going to plant some more tulips last year and daffodil bulbs and I never did. So over here in my next garden, some more bachelor buttons that have self-seeded and once again I don't remember what that is I need to look at last year's pictures and see um, I've got a sad little um, Cosmo Cosmos right there Cosmos Cosmo I don't know if you say that plural or not um, some more daffodils and these little um, landscaping bricks I had to put there because there uh, we we did see a skunk go underneath my porch and come out that other end right over there so um, I don't think he was making a little home I think he was looking for something to eat so we blocked that because we do not want um, little baby skunks being born under our porch they can go under somebody else's porch Okay, so this is my garden in front that gets mostly shade. So this here is some salvia that's coming back from last year. And I've got a, um, what is that little succulent called? Like stone crop, I think, growing here. And then a whole bunch of snapdragons back there. Um, and then I do get a lot of echinacea. And so that's what these are here, the purple cone flower. And then last but not least, I have a rose bush here, a climbing rose bush, red. It started out as a Jacob's coat rose. And if you look at this, I have tons of little buds on this. So one year it just kind of got infested with these spider mites and I cut it all the way back and I even thought I dug it out. And then to my surprise, it uh, started growing back again last summer or maybe the summer before man oh i just i haven't been out here to look but look at how many buds i have on this wow i am not a rose gardener i had a hard time well what i thought i had a hard time keeping this alive but um apparently it seems to like this spot so we'll see i'll check back with that i have this box of seeds from uh some zinnia flower heads that i saved from last season and i wanted to keep them in there head forms so that I can see which colors they are so that when I go to plant them again I know which colors I'm planting where. So I got some yellow zinnias, some pinks and purples and yes yeah, some really pretty ones so if you've never harvested zinnia seeds before they're super easy you just uh, so here's the little heads and then if you hard to do this one-handed pull that out there's a little seed right there so you can imagine each one of these heads, each one of these little leaves has a seed on the end of it. So it's really easy to harvest zinnia seeds and they do pretty well. So I'm gonna probably grab some of these and go throw them in the, the garden a little bit later today. Hey friends, welcome back. It is Sunday afternoon. Oh, actually it's 7 p.m. So it's not the afternoon anymore, it is now the evening. And what you see before you is my almost finished Biscorn U. I've done all of the cross stitches. I had to run to the store because uh, to Joann's to get some skeins of floss because I ran out of both colors, surprisingly enough. So crisis averted, I got some more floss and I really, I stopped working on the bee and I wanted to get this done before I give all my attention to my eagle. And uh, you can see that I got all the stitching done. Now, if you look really close, you will see mistakes because there are some. And um, I took some liberties at some point where I made a mistake and said, well, I'll just do that same mistake four more times. So yeah, it's not perfect. 
there are some mistakes, <laughs> but it's okay. Uh, what I'm working on now is the back stitching that you have to do all the way around the outside of the edge, and I'm doing it by hand, in hand. I don't usually do a lot of stitching in hand because I'm not good at it, but I could do this, uh, like, you know, the sewing method, basically, of doing the back stitching. I've done this one already, so you can see. If you've never done a Biscornu, that's how you attach the two pieces together, is, you know, you do a back stitch around this one, and you do a back stitch around this one, and then you line that corner up with the middle of this side, and then you do a whip stitch through the back stitches. And then because you're kind of starting at a corner, and that's what gives it the weird shape. It just kind of is magic the way it happens, really. But in order to attach them together, you have to do a back stitching. So that's all I have left to do. And then I can go ahead and assemble this. So I'm pretty excited about that. So like I said, it is Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening. Uh, I will try to finish this in the next couple of days. I'm going to continue working on my bee for the next couple of days. My son leaves on Thursday. Uh, so I decided that Thursday is going to be the day that I start working on my eagle. So until then, I'm going to probably continue working on this and the bee. The Stanley Cup final starts on Wednesday night. We play against the Tampa Bay Lightning, so that's going to be exciting. And I'm looking forward to that. Okay, you remember I said in a previous clip when I was talking all about the Lenart Four Seasons... And actually, let me put this away, and then I will get that out. Okay, here it is, and this is what it looks like. So, very pretty. And I had mentioned that I had started up on this corner up here, and because of these spread out motifs, um, I was just kind of losing my interest a little bit on working on this, and I had wished I had started in the center. And I pulled this out because I wanted to see if I could feasibly count from here all the way to here to start working on this and realized there is just no way that I could that I feel comfortable doing that and having it work out right <laughs> not only because you know it's it's like an even weave so it's not like I'm just counting on Ada where I just have to count the holes I have to kind of count you know over the threads of you know an even weave which is more challenging and also because the pattern is spread across you know pages and so yeah, there is just so much room for air there. It's just not going to happen. So I decided instead, originally, I think another reason why I was kind of struggling with it is because I had it in a hoop. And I'll show you sort of the hoop, how I kind of had it in the hoop. I had this just a little, what is this, an eight inch hoop. And so, you know, I had a lot of fabric around the outside that I was trying to deal with. And then, you know, I was just needing to move the hoop, but I don't know. I don't know what it was. I don't know why I was struggling with that. And I did count, before I put this away, I did had, had counted from here over here and from here to here to make sure that this part was right. And I had started stitching that. So if you look, that's this right here. Now, this right here is full coverage. So even the background, I think the whole background, actually has a really light yellow on it, or mostly. It's mostly full coverage. But then this is not, the, you know, this is plain space here, but then this little rectangle here is full coverage. And I thought, you know what, if I can just get myself over to this part right here and start stitching this, it's beautiful. And I really, really, really like that part. It's just as pretty as this center. So, and I decided to take it out of this hoop and put it in my 11 by 17 inch Q-snap. And I went ahead and put it in a uh, landscape so that I can just sort of work across the top and then start focusing on this piece right here that's the spring section. And after I did that, I couldn't resist, so I put in two strands of that really light pink. And you can probably guess what happened. Yes, I wanted to keep stitching on this. I wanted to forget about everything else I was stitching on, eagle included. And I just wanted to continue working on this. But I'm going to, I'm going to stay strong. And I'm going to put this away and not work on it. Resist the temptation. And I'm going to focus on my eagle. But I feel much better about working on this now just because I put it on this nice uh, 
I don't know, it's just a bigger canvas and I can kind of feel like I know where I'm going. And plus I can hook it onto my stand too. So I have fallen in love with this project all over again and I'm excited to get back to it. So stay tuned for a future video when you see more of this being done. All right, that's it for now. I'm gonna go finish doing the back stitching on my Biscorn U and probably try to get that assembled and I'm going to continue working on my B for the next few days and I'll check in and let you know how it all looks. Okay, see you soon. Hey Stitchers, welcome back. It's been about a week since the last clip and it's been a, a bit of a crazy week. It's Wednesday, it's Wednesday, June 22nd today and I have a little bit to talk about here. Um, I should probably put a disclaimer at the beginning of this video that anything I say I'm gonna do is subject to change. That's what I always have, but you know, that's kind of how it always is around here at uh, Calico Whimsy's channel. Um, okay, let's, let's first talk about this. The Colorado Avalanche, my team, my team, they're doing so good. They're in the Stanley Cup final. And I think I told you that in my last clip that we had won the playoffs and we are now currently playing the Tampa Bay Lightning. We have had three games so far. Game four is tonight. The Avs won the first two games. Uh, the second game being about the most exciting game ever because we shut them out 7-0 and it was great. Uh, but the next night, uh, the next game, we didn't do so well and they kind of uh, clobbered us 6-2. to two. We didn't show up for that game. Tonight is game four. Okay, so for those of you that don't play hockey, it's best of seven, best of seven games. So, all right, I'm, re I'm ready to go. Okay, let's talk about stitching. Uh, okay, I had mentioned my Biscorn U was almost done in my last video, and I am happy to report that I have a finish with that one now. So I stitched it all up, added a button at the top and the bottom. There's a button there, and uh, I stuffed it with crushed walnut shells, which I have never used those before. My last Biscorn U that I have done was... Um, just I just stuffed it with polyfill and it's kind of lightweight, but I really like the heftiness of this. So I think moving forward, I'm going to go with the walnut shells. I think I really like uh, the feel that it has. So, yep, I am excited that. So I, I need excited for that finish and I need to, I am so behind on Instagram. I have to post things clear back from when I finished my shells and, the, and I kind of like to keep things in chronological order. So I'll, once I don't uh, post a picture, then it kind of, they get backed up, but I think I just need to post them. It doesn't really matter if they're in chronological order or not, but this one I need to post before the end of June so I can tag it with the hashtag uh, pincushion challenge 2022. Yes, okay, so exciting. All right, the next thing uh, I wanna show you is my B. So the, I had started doing that when I was watching the playoffs and then I just continued stitching with that and I'm just going to put something behind it but I am also happy to report that I finished all the cross stitching on it so all I have left to do now is the beads so so pretty I just loved this one I hadn't had really any intentions of just going through with it but you know from start to finish you can't see a little bit there but I really just Kind of found it really soothing to stitch these yellows because this week was just kind of a stressful week um, because my son as you know as I've mentioned many times he uh, was leaving for Ireland I think I originally said he was leaving on the 17th on Friday the 17th but he was actually scheduled his flight was scheduled to leave on this past Thursday the 16th of June and it was uh, he was supposed to go from Denver to Dallas, Dallas to Dublin. And, you know, flying is horrendous right now. So we were kind of hoping that it would be as smooth as that, but of course it wasn't. It ended up being an extremely stressful day at the airport. He was there all day. His flight got, his first flight got delayed and then his, uh, it caused him to miss his connecting flight to Dublin and then all the other flights were getting full. 
and uh, his baggage had gone on to Dallas and it was just, it was very stressful. He was at the airport, then we went and picked him back up again. We were able to get him a flight the next day out on British Airways. And so he went from Denver to Holland, I'm not Holland, Denver to London, and then had like a six over six hour layover in Heathrow and then from London to Dublin. And so, and he left, so he left on, ended up leaving on the 17th and it was all, it was all good. Oh, and his, and his baggage came from Dallas back to Denver and we were able to pick that up and get it on the right flight with him. So all that being said, it was actually smooth compared to other horror stories I'd heard about uh, traveling right now. So we are thankful. He took him about 36 hours, I think, total to get out of here to get to where he um, uh, sent us a picture of his dorm room at uh, the um, Maynooth University in uh, right outside of Dublin and he's all tucked away and he's been sending us the most amazing pictures and as a matter of fact just before I started filming this he sent us a picture of himself kissing the Blarney Stone which of course me and my husband were like oh that's cool and then immediately we're googling uh how clean is that thing <laughs> so I'm happy to report that uh they do disinfect it and let it dry really well in between kissings and the bars that you hold on to when you, they turn you upside down, yeah, there's Purell and they hand sanitize it all and the guy holding you is wearing gloves. And so, yeah, then we're like, yay, but still, ooh. <laughs> anyway, he's just, he's having a great time and, and it's just been wonderful. So, okay, I can breathe a sigh of relief now for six weeks until he comes back again and he's probably gonna have I'm sure the flights are going to be horrendous coming back anyway, but the important thing is he made it there safely and he's having a great time and, and sending us all the wonderful pictures. Okay, so I was, I, that, all that to say that I found this very soothing to stitch. These, the yellow patterns here are, you know what? I just remember too that I had forgot to cross a stitch somewhere up here that I need to go back and fix. I need to add that, um, the second cross stitch. But the patterns of the yellow and the fact that it was just, you know, really soothing colors, I really enjoyed kind of the mindless stitching of it. And I think it's why I just like went, you know, to town on this. Plus, not only that, but I was um, stitching on this during the hockey games too. and. You might think it's hard to stitch during a hockey game, but I've, I have it down to a science. I know exactly how to, you know, look down and look up and watch, you know, watch it. I can tell by listening, you know, when you kind of need to look up at the screen. So yeah, I'm actually pretty good at stitching during a hockey game, even the really exciting ones, except for when they're on a power play. Then I have to focus, give it to all my attention or like over time, but I'm a pretty good uh, hockey stitcher. Okay, <sighs> ramble, ramble, ramble. Um, what else did I do? Okay, so it's June 22nd today. Yesterday was June 21st, uh, summer solstice, first day of summer, and um, Cat Talks and Miss T and Stitches have hosted another Mill Hill Sal. And it's anything that speaks summer to you. So I looked through all the different ones that I had in my stash, and I decided to start with that I would do the lemonade. It's just called Lemonade. And these are the colors, which are just so colorful and bright, if you can see those. And uh, got a start on it yesterday, and so far this is what I've gotten done. So you can kind of see that, you know, it looks a little bit better. So. This, this is going to be the lemonade, and then this right here is one of the lemons, and then, so some of the Mill Hill kits, when you, when you stitch them, they have like different parts, which I didn't really realize by looking at this one that, that that's how it is, but you're going to stitch this background, like the little napkin that it's sitting on, that you stitch separately on the perforated paper. This lemon you stitch separately, and then you stitch the lemonade separately, and then you stitch them all together when you're done. So I've only done that one other time in a kit. I think my Nutcracker, the sword that he holds, is added on later. So um, I'm not quite sure how it's going to go together, but it's usually pretty self-explanatory. So that's why the lemon is over here off to the side and the 
off to the side from the lemonade and then you'll stitch the napkin over here and then cut them out and assemble it. So super cute with that. And it's not too late to join. Um, I think it's just gonna go all summer long, just uh, anything that any Mill Hill that speaks summer to you or whatever. There's no Mill Hill police, so you can even do Christmas in July and call it a summer stitch for Mill Hill. Um, okay, so last thing I wanna talk about, because I'm a little short on time today, is that I had a, um, an impromptu new start. And this is it, okay? Um, how did this transpire? Okay, it's a little bit of a blur. It was right around the time my son was leaving and I was chatting with um, Kat Talks and Morgan Miss T and Stitches and, we, and Kat had said she had lost her stitchy bug and then we kind of got to thinking, well, what can we do to revamp it? Maybe you need a new start. start. And then um, because all of us have tons of Dimensions kits, we all decided since we all three had this one in our, uh, already in our stash we decided on an impromptu start and we all started this some somewhere along the lines when my son was traveling to Ireland I don't know that that's all a blur <laughs> I don't really know when it happened but yes we decided to start this and I only did a, a minimal start on mine just because I was really trying to get the bee done the stitching on the bee done so so far this is what I got done on it and this is the top border. This is going to be this part right here is where I started the corner. So, and this one is just really, really easy to stitch and I didn't want to stop working on it, but I did put it off to the side just so that I could do the finish, the stitching on the B. And then I also wanted to get uh, something started for summer at Mill Hill. Okay, so that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at right now. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, um, Christine, when are you gonna get the eagle out? And I am, I really am. I don't want, I know it sounds like I don't wanna work on the eagle, but I really do. I mean, I, I really, really wanna work on the eagle. It's calling to me. I just um, am pretty sure that once I start working on it, I'm gonna give it a lot of attention. So I guess you can kind of say I'm sort of finishing up some loose ends and you know, getting, I, I'd probably, I'm probably going to work on getting the lemonade finished, getting the bee beaded, and maybe start a, a second kit for, um, like when I get the lemonade finished, I might have another little small kit going for the summer at Mill Hill, because I do have quite a few cute summer ones now. Um, so I'll have that going on the side, but then, but I don't know, I mean, this is calling to me pretty strongly too, so I'll just probably just, you know, figure out a way to work on them all. Okay, uh, let me look at my notes because I did actually write some notes. Okay, yes, I think I covered everything on my notes. I did want to say one more thing too. I briefly mentioned in an earlier clip that I had started watching Criss Cross Stitch and I've watched only one of his videos so far. Well. I went back to video one and I completely binge watched all of his floss tubes. <laughs> ah, you really need to go check him out if you haven't. He just has, and I would highly suggest starting from the beginning because then you kind of understand how everything comes about. Like um, Tiki, the tree of a thousand faces and handstanding in the naming of handstanding cat and Ted's change jar and the neighbor's corner and so story time with Chris, Chris's vintage toy chest. Oh, Sal, the puppet. I think that that puppet has the most expressive eyes and is like the cutest puppet on floss tube. <laughs> June says she's the cutest puppet on floss tube. So, um, okay, you're the cutest finger puppet. How about we go with that? Sal's the cutest puppet and you're the cutest finger puppet. You okay with that? Okay. I'm not nearly the puppeteer that <laughs> Chris is, but <laughs> anyway, um, that's it for now. I'm going to end this because I have a lot to do today before the big game tonight, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Good morning, stitching friends. It's Saturday, June 25th, and I'm sitting here getting ready to put some beads into my bead. Let's look at the beads. I've got them loaded in the tin, ready to go. Looks like there's a 
about maybe four different colors there to get us started. And uh, this is probably going to take a little bit of time. It does look like there's a lot of beading. We'll have to see. I really should probably go on a hike today because it's nice and cool outside. That's the good part. The bad part is that it's Saturday and the hiking trails get really crowded. So I'm trying to convince myself if I should just sit here and stitch or if I should go out and go on a hike. I probably will end up doing a little bit of both. I'll keep you posted. And in case you're wondering about the game last night, we could have had the cup, but we didn't. We could have had a win at home. We were ready. Colorado was ready for the celebration, but we didn't win. So that means we get to play again tomorrow night. We have to go back on the road again, back to Tampa Bay to play game six. And maybe we'll win the cup on the road. I'll keep you posted. See you soon. Well, before I start the beating, I came out here to change the hose and remembered that I completely forgot to show you my finish from yesterday. My lemonade. Isn't that cute? So it had different pieces. It had the, the, you know, the lemon and then the lemonade and the napkin. And so I had to stitch them together. And that I just kind of winged it. Wasn't quite sure exactly how that needed to be done. So I just sort of, if you can see there, I kind of just did like a running stitch all around the outside edge there. And same with here. If you look, you can kind of see the stitches. I don't know if it's going to focus. I just did almost, yeah, just kind of like some running stitches along the bottom there. I wasn't quite sure how that was supposed to be done, but it uh, turned out okay, cute, and I didn't back it yet, so the back kind of looks like a mess, but I did my beaded hanger, and I just need to glue some felt on the back and call that good. And I'm excited about that. This light doesn't really show how sparkly it is, but it does have a nice sparkle to it in the right light. And the cute little butterfly charm there. And uh, then last night, uh, I wanted to get a start on another one, so I chose this one right here. Finally, after having this for years, I think, in my stash, and I got a really good start on it last night. Stayed up way too late, and um, I had to really force myself to stop stitching this at like 2 o'clock in the morning. But, like I said, I put that aside for today so I can get some beading done on my bee. And I also wanted to show you some exciting new kits that I got. So this is the new, some of the new kits from Mill Hill that are going to be the winter collection. And because I just apparently can't stop stitching Blue Jays, I had to buy the Blue Jay. Look at those pretty beads that floss. So I'll start that sometime in the winter. These are all the ones that come in the collection. And the only other one I bought so far out of this collection is the Aurora Borealis. And I don't think I knew this before I got it, but they, it has glow-in-the-dark beads. Those beads right there glow in the dark. So I'm really excited to start that. I might start that one here uh, before this vlog is done, maybe. Oh, I just, there's so many of them I want to start. And then I bought two of the new small ones. This one right here I bought because it's one of those ceramic, those vintage ceramic lighted trees. I had one when I was a kid. They were really popular in the 70s. And then I think a year or two ago, I bought one. Um, I just bought like a small version of one of these, but I think they're adorable. Those little ceramic trees really bring back memories from my childhood. And then these are the other ones in that collection right there. And I only bought one more of those so far, even though they're all super cute. But the other one I got was this New Year's Eve one here with the little champagne glasses and the cheers. Oh, got that little snowflake charm. Just adorable. Okay, well, that's it. I need to go change the hose and get some beading done. See you soon. Good morning. It is now Sunday, 24 hours later. 
and I got six beads put in yesterday, and that's it. I filmed that clip, put in about six beads, then my son woke up, and I asked him if he wanted to go on a hike, and he was up for it. So we called, uh, called around to see who wanted to go with us, and we found that my sister-in-law and two nephews were up for it also. So we all met up over at my mom's house, carpooled up to a nice, beautiful hike right outside of Boulder. And it was, and the weather was just um, nice and cool. It was a perfect day for a hike. So I'm really glad that we had decided to do that. Then we hit Starbucks on the way home. I went to the grocery store, cooked some dinner. And by that time, I was tired and didn't feel like doing any beating. And I thought, well, I could work on my small mill hill because that's easy. But for some reason, my eagle was calling to me. And I thought, I'm going to make some progress on that. Okay, mistake number one is I sat in my bed to do some stitching. So I'm going to insert a clip to show you where I got started because I, I think I had intentions of doing a lot of stitching and I thought I better show you my before so I can show you my after. Well, uh, I ended up not getting a whole lot done. So if you look in this area right here, this dark gray, it was right, yeah, maybe right there, and this dark area right there, just a few stitches. I did about three strands of floss, and then I fell asleep in the upright position with my head cocked at about a 90 degree angle. My husband woke me up and said, you probably ought to put your stitching away and go to bed. And I thought, yes, that's good advice, because I'm certainly not getting anything done anymore on this. So I think I had intended on getting all of this filled in, but uh, best laid plans, right? I apparently was tired because I didn't get out of bed till 10 o'clock this morning, and it is now about 10.30 a.m., and I don't have a lot of plans today, so I think I'm going to have a pretty good stitching day today. I'm going to finish the beading on my bee going to be my top priority. After that, uh, I'll kind of see where the stitchy mood takes me, but I would like to get the rest of this area filled in on my eagle today at some point, and I would also like to maybe finish the stitching on my seagull, and if I still have time left to stitch, I might switch over to finery of nature and put a few stitches in that one. That's my plan. The abs play tonight at six, so I definitely, I'm definitely going to work on something easy during the game. So yeah, maybe I'll work on my mill hill, my small mill hill during that. Cause that, that looks that's pretty easy, and I, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I'll check in tomorrow and let you know what I get done today. All right. Well, I hope you all are having a good stitchy day, and I will see you real soon. Good afternoon, Stitchers. It is Thursday, June 30th. It is the last day of the month, so I'm popping in here to do my last clip and uh, give you an update on what I finished. What you just saw in that previous clip was the uh, Colorado Avalanche becoming the 2022 Stanley Cup champions. It was so exciting. We had such a fantastic time watching the game. I was in a group chat with some relatives, and we just were pretty much um, through actually through all of the Stanley Cup games we had a uh, like a group chat going where our objective was to only post animated gifs as to how we were feeling throughout the game and it was hysterical we had a great time doing that okay uh, let me just finish up here and let you know what I've been doing with stitching and I promise I won't be talking about hockey anymore in this video <laughs> it was exciting I mean you know we'll be we'll be relishing in that win for the whole year I'm sure okay I am so excited to show you that I finished the bee and I put it in one of the Mill Hill frames which I'm not particularly fond of their frames 
So I just have it taped in the back and I won't really show you how that looks because it isn't pretty. But hey, it's in a frame. And I just want to zoom in here and show you the details of this. Well, here, let me show you the whole thing. There you go. Now let's zoom in and look at the details there. And all of the little beads. I had so much fun stitching this, I can't describe it. And it will always and forever remind me of watching the Stanley Cup playoffs and the Stanley Cup final. And even though I just said I wasn't going to talk about hockey anymore, I just had to say that one last thing that I will always think of that when I see this bee. Look at that. Isn't it pretty? Let me just kind of go a little bit at an angle here so you can see. So I've mentioned in the past that I don't use three strands of thread like they call for. I only use two. And when I attach all my beads, I attach them all with a half cross stitch instead of a full even the small ones. And so sometimes you can kind of see, like if you look at the bee there, he's, he's not really truly full as full black coverage, as full coverage as you might like. So I, you know, that just doesn't matter to me. I'd rather get them done faster and get them on, move on to the next one than to have to worry about, you know, using three strands and not being able to do the loop start. All right. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so I am excited to show you that, and then I have two more. Um, so I have this one that I think I had started stitching. Oh, I just realized I haven't done the back stitching of the little birds there, so I guess I'm not officially done with this, and plus I haven't cut it out. But look at that one. Oh my gosh. I have had this one in my collection for a long time, and I've seen many people stitch it, and you know what? It looks like I missed a stitch crossing over too. <laughs> Why, I always notice that when I go to film. See, it just like sticks out like a sore thumb. Okay, so when I'm done with this video, I'm going to cross that stitch and I'm going to add the little birds, uh, the little backstitch birds right there. And double check and make sure I didn't miss anything else. Okay, I was like just finishing this up right before this video, so I was a little hasty. But rest assured, I will cross that stitch and finish those birds right before I cut this out. And then the other night when I wanted something little to work on and didn't want to do any beading, I started this one. And this is going to be the last and final one that I do for Summer at Mill Hill, the Summer at Mill Hill Stitch Along. And I haven't even posted that I've started this on Instagram yet, but I did just the other night I started it. So got a new start on that. And I'm hoping to finish this up later today. And if I do, I will add the finish on to the end of this clip. And that is all. I did not ever touch my eagle again. And I did not ever touch finery of nature again. So this is all I have done since that last clip. When I said I had the whole day and I was going to do all that stuff, well... It's amazing how the day gets away from me, and even though I think I have all day to stitch, I really don't by the time I start, you know, cooking meals and doing all the things that you do in a day. So, but I did finish the bee. All right, um, I have been editing this month's vlog as I've gone along, and I try to keep them at about an hour, and because I got a little long-winded this month, and I think my video after this clip is going to be over an hour already, I've decided that I'm not going to add the bird nerd section on to the end this month uh, because I think I had a lot I wanted to say and I can't just talk about birds just a little bit. So I'm going to just hold off and not add that clip onto this month's video. Sorry about that. Uh, instead though, just to leave you with a little bit something, um, I'm going to add some pictures of my so my son is has been in Ireland now for a couple of weeks and he's got four more to go but he's been doing some fun things and he's been taking some amazing pictures and I thought that just because this kind of is a vlog of my life not only just my stitching because kind of my stitching and my my real life and my stitching life kind of go hand in hand with each other and if I ever do look back on this vlog, I kind of want to know what I was doing at the time to influence what I stitch at the time and blah, blah, blah. That's a lot to say that I'm going to add some pictures of my son's trip from Ireland and a little clip of him kissing the Blarney Stone. If, hold on, let me let the dog finish barking. Okay. 
So if you do not have any interest whatsoever in seeing some pictures of my son's semester abroad in Ireland, I promise you I will not be offended if you click off now and move on to the next stitching video. But if by chance you are curious to kind of see what he's been up to, we'll definitely add some pictures of his trip to Blarney Castle and just a bunch of other things. Uh, okay, uh, I will leave you with that and thank you so much for hanging with me while I uh, make it through the month of June. And if you're uh, new, welcome to my channel. And if you're returning, thank you so much for spending time with me again. I will catch you all at the end of July. Bye for now. Hunter getting ready to go to Ireland. He's packing floss. Oh, you have a sticker for his bag? What is it? <laughs> Let me see which one is it. Alright, see you at the airport. There he goes! <laughs> I'm going to go to the bell, so 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 I'm going